What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome in to the Wednesday, January 17th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are our top headlines. First up, LNG tankers divert from Red Sea as Qatar warns of escalation. Next up, no calling in sick or waiting for a nice day. The grid has to perform on the worst of them. Amen. Next up is an op-ed piece, new report. Highlights green failure in Europe. That's a warning to America. Dun, dun, dun. Next up, Bill, uh, Biden's trillion-dollar climate agenda is blowing up, and John Kerry has a lot to answer for. Our favorite. And finally, what a second term for Trump could mean for the U.S. oil and gas business. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. We did see prices, specifically on the natural gas side, dive a little bit. We did see um, oil prices stay fairly steady. We also did get a highlight of what the API believes crude oil inventories will look like for you guys as you listen to, listen to this. We will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. But before we do that, as always, we'd like to remember that the news and analysis you're about to hear is brought to you by world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. What do you got for us, Stu? Hey, let's start out with our buddies over there in the Red Sea. LNG tankers divert from Red Sea as Qatar uh, warns of escalation. Uh, this is really kind of sad. Uh, Qatar uh, rerouted three vessels heading to Europe via the Suez Canal, and then Russia is also avoiding the key waterways. And uh, here is uh, Qatar's uh, prime minister, Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin uh, Ali uh, Thang said at the World Economic Forum, this has changed how we in view international trade. LNG will be affected. There'll be alternative routes. They are less efficient. You know what this means is uh, the Houthis are causing climate change. Because uh, think about how far those tankers have to go now. Yep. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, and uh, uh, Miss Producer, could you pull this in and uh, show the map of the uh, uh, LNGs that are being uh, LNG tankers that are being diverted? It is going to be costly. And then we yep. just had that. Few days ago, we had that uh, U.S. Uh, car um, cargo carrier uh, shipping container got hit by by the Hooties. So, anyway, I wonder if they, if they were banned, would they be the Hooties in the blowfish, or would they be the Hooties in blowed up the tanker? I don't know. Let's go. To <laughs> I don't the know. Next All I know, Stu, is that what's interesting is this hasn't necessarily spiked prices as much. Isn't that as weird? We would have thought. Very weird. I, I don't I ain't got no clue, man. I, I threw in the pricing towel a little while ago. Yep. Hey, but I want to give a shout out to all of our folks across uh, the world keeping the grid up. Uh, no calling in sick or waiting for a nice day. The grid has to perform on the worst of them. I'll tell you what. That, you know, hanging off of a pole while the pole's down and minus 16 degrees is is huge. Things break at minus 36 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to sit back and kind of go, wow. Alberta is just being devastated by their uh, zero output in uh, solar. And then they're being uh, really like one, I think, wind turbine was going. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you're going to see some things come uh, back around. According to the AESO, the provincial grid operator, Alberta has 4,481 megawatts of wind power at the peak of last weekend's deep freeze. It was producing about one third of the percent of that total, not just useless, but far more useless than when it needed it the most. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's crazy is that, you know, we don't retrofit our specifically. I mean, can't, Alberta's a little different. They've got this figured out a little bit, but the problem is somewhere where we're, where we live here, Texas, they don't ret. We don't retrofit it for what the worst of it. We 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 plan for the best of days or the average of days. Right. Can't do that when it comes to the grid. We all no. want power specifically when it gets cold. 
Exactly. And, and uh, one of the things, uh, the other comment in this article was pretty impressive. He, uh, this person also goes on to say, we can switch to heat pumps. This one takes the cake. Heat pumps will exacerbate the problem at the worst time when it's at its coldest because it, power because demands at its highest. And when the grid is maxed out, it's opposite components of who says EVs. There was also an article that went out on Newsbeat today, Michael, that said uh, there's a bunch of dead robots out at the Tesla charging station in Chicago. <laughs> Nobody could get their charging stations. Done. I mean, it's a disaster. I mean, I feel sorry for all those EV drivers who are having to push their car in this cold. I mean, we're not against it. The problem is it's got to be done right, and I don't want to freeze to death. I'd oh, like no. not to freeze to death. Is that so hard to ask for? Oh, no, much? and I've got to put in – I'll put in the show notes also this one story by Tammy Nemeth. Uh, she found it. They were saying this one article up in Alberta. The guy goes, I love me an EV, and I love it so much that I can go ahead at minus – 40 i dial up my phone app and warm the car up and then he was saying well i don't get very far because <laughs> he's draining the battery people are great right. what's next let's go to the op-ed new report highlights green failure in europe and warns america um this one's pretty interesting. Uh, Rupert uh, Dowell's uh, report for the Real Clear Foundation has a couple great quotes in it. Uh, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Hmm. Uh, you know, this ties into uh, the Davos crew and everything else. Uh, the analysis of this Great Britain heeding the cries for decarbonization starting when Parliament wrote an 80% decrease Ooh. in emissions in law in 2008. They raised it to 100% or net zero in 2019. And since they have, it's been a disaster. Ooh. So... Um, the differences between the British energy cost and those here in the U S are staggering. Brits pay an average of $228 per megawatt hour for electricity from coal in 2022. And Americans pay an average of $27 per megawatt nap in <laughs> huge difference. Yeah. Um, I mean unbelievable. Yeah, I mean it's 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 pretty crazy. I talked about this last night on my solo solo show. Solo, <laughs> solo show. We got us a this, new podcast term. Solo. The, the, this this inflation reduction act. Everyone's taking a bite out of the apple. You've got BlackRock buying up infrastructure companies. Why? Because they care about climate change. Absolutely not. Because they want a little bit of that government revenue. Right. It's absolutely hilarious. Former New York City Mayor uh, Michael Bloomberg was given well over $1 billion of his personal wealth to the Sierra Club to fund its Beyond Coal and Beyond Carbon campaigns. He designed it to rid the U.S. of every coal fire plant by 2030. You, you, would, you wouldn't save the environment more if you just took that billion and flushed it down the drain than you would actually deploying it through the Sierra club and out into the economy. You know what, you know what? You know, Total energy printing out flyers. Oh, those our don't friends, come from oil and our, gas. Our friends over at a Total. Lot of flyers. Yeah. Our, our friends over at Total Energy figured it out. They bought new, uh, natural gas power plants in Texas uh, enough to power the two nuclear reactors and they're going to make money on it. Yep, so absolutely. Yeah, you, okay. Anyway, let's go off to the next one. Um, my buddy, old Lurch, uh, Biden's trillion uh, dollar climate agenda is blowing up and John Kerry has a lot to answer for. Um, as much as the White House, I didn't even write this one. This is pretty funny. As much as the White House wants to kiss up to the climate lobby, it's clear the world still needs fossil fuels. <laughs> Listen, Miss Producer, can you fly in this one thing? John Kerry's staff, he pays his staff $4.3 million in salaries. The highest salary is $186,000 per year. The mean salary is one hundred and seventy, dollars and they, 
70,000 and they keep the people hidden on who's on that staff. So he has just announced that he is stepping down while he was just before he went to Davos. And today at Davos, uh, I leaned over to him. I'm just kidding. I was, uh, but he, uh, he said that he's really not retiring. He's stepping down to help Biden run his campaign. I'm like, Hmm. Just what, just what we need. I was about to ask you how Davos has been. The the Swiss air well, looks good on you. I had a funny one. I had a guy running up to Carrie with a shoved a microphone in Carrie's face and said, "Hey, do you think climate change is real?" And then he said something else about Carrie, and Carrie goes, "That's a stupid question." And then he had about five more, and I was going to claim that as my interview with Carrie. That was you. But, That's funny. All right, let's go to the next one here. Um, what would a second term mean for U.S. oil and gas? Uh, uh, second Trump uh, second term. term tr Trump, Trump term. Thank you. Let me say this. I got to give a shout out to uh, R.T. Trevino, uh, big dog over there at Pecos operating. He has said he makes more money when a Democrat is in power because the oil prices are higher. All right. Yeah. Uh, so all the oil guys are over here kind of going, OK, lowering regulatory issues uh, is good under the Trump Biden uh, administration. Biden makes them more money. He's <laughs> well, so I we think what, what to expect from a Trump administration if he were to win again? Well, looser regulations, rig counts instead of going down are probably going to go back up. Oil right. production is going to continue to increase at a rapid pace because more smaller operators have the ability to produce. And guess what that means? Oil right. prices will naturally be suppressed. It's interesting from the standpoint of everyone on gas is generally a Republican. But right. we all make way more money when the Democrats are in power. So I love that they that that RT talks about this because it's really true. It also is good right. to point out that leasing on federal lands and specifically offshore is going to be a lot easier, which those two things move the needle way more than, you know, six exactly. loads. Exactly. Exactly. And this article has some fantastic points in it. Uh, but I think RT uh, was absolutely the best way we could articulate that point. Yeah, and to be honest, President Biden's liable to get us into a war with Iran. That's going to send prices through the roof. Oh, yeah. I might uh, get drafted, but that's, you know, who cares? Uh, yeah, the hoodie and the blowfish are already at it, and we're about to, you know, he's going to go try to take out. He doesn't even know what he's doing, though. But, hey, um, I'm, I'm ready for some ice cream. I'm a little hungry talking about Biden. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and kick it over to finance, guys. Um, nothing too crazy on the oil and gas front. We really uh, uh, we didn't see API drop uh, uh, the American Petroleum Institute numbers. I forgot markets closed on Monday. That means that we'll get the API um, or the crude oil storage numbers on Thursday, along with Nat gas storage and uh, and, and all the rest. I, I thought it was interesting as, as yields fell today about six tenths of a percentage point. S&P 500 dropped about three tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ fairly flat. That led crude oil to drop somewhere between about dollar, dollar 50, but really only ended down about six tenths of a percentage point, which is a 50 cent swing. But we were all the way up above 7350, currently trading 7194. So tension going back there again. I'm I've been very shocked at the non movement of oil prices relative to what's going on specifically um, in the Middle East. So we will be following that specifically. Otherwise, not much else. It's kind of a quiet day. Davos was, you know, for, for, for those who, who don't know what Davos is, the World Economic Forum meets every year in Davos, Switzerland. Right? That's Switzerland? Yes. It's Switzerland. And uh, it's a zoo. They are really, really upset about Twitter. They have said that they're going to come out and absolutely destroy uh, free speech. They're, they're not hiding anything anymore. It's crazy. It is crazy. So, well, with that, guys, we'll hope you enjoy your day. We hopefully you guys uh, um, um, stay calm. What what else should be we be worried about, Stu? Just Davos? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, when Schwab and Ursula and, and everybody else start threatening you, 
you better pay attention. I'm they said uh, d- disease X is on the way. And uh, they also said the grid's going to be shut down and the internet's going to be shut down. So who knows what these guys are going to say? I did forget to mention, guys, this this show is now sponsored by the World Economic Forum. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. He I, I put my I'm doing the best I can to get him on the show. Klaus Schwab on the show. That'll be the day. We'll shut it down after that. Guys. All right. With that, guys, for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Oh, <laughs>